If you like to fish, but you don't have a boat, you end up spending your whole life casting from shore. You can never get your bait out in the middle where the big ones live. So here's what you do. Get yourself an old flintlock musket. You get it from a museum or an old guy, or you could probably make one out of a bicycle or something. Then you just ram the powder and the wadding in there, just like they used to back in the old days, you know, and when killing something was a real pain in the neck. And in this case, the ball of lead that you drop in is actually a sinker, and it's hooked onto your fishing lure, and the whole thing is attached to your fishing line. Then all you have to do is just aim it to where the fish are. And you're in business. store in town place was jammed to the eyeballs. That's because the plumbing store is also the community theater. <laughs> and they're having auditions this week for another one of their yawn fests. <laughs> I went in there for a piece of drain pipe, but it ran out of time, so just gonna reinstall the old one here. It's still good. <laughs> what? What? Give it a, a sweatband. A sweatband. A sweatband. Like an extra, well, if an I, extra sweatband. Yeah, if, if I had a sweatband at all, Dalton, it would be an extra one. Believe me. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to do? Kill yourself so you can collect the insurance here? No, I'm trying to get in shape for the community theater auditions. Oh. This, I just went exhausted from all this jogging. Oh yeah. What? Oh, How far have you gone? Oh, just from the door to here. <laughs> it's all uphill. Hill, yeah. yeah. Oh, I gotta get in shape, right? You know. The, they're doing a stage version of the movie Gladiator. Oh, yeah, no, I saw that one. That's where the guy fights everybody to the death, isn't it? That's the part I want, the lead! <laughs> That's gonna take a fair bit of acting. No. Well, I'll be ready, Red, and, and get this. What? They've already cast the love interest. Oh, yeah? Flinty McClintock's wife. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty good-looking woman to be hanging out with a guy like you, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's show business. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I gotta go. Yeah. Oh, oh Dalton, Dal how does Anne-Marie feel about you doing the hoochie-coochie with Flinty's wife? <laughs> I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Yeah, Dalton, Dalton, you better be under that bridge when you come to it. Word game! Today's winner walks away with a coupon for two free bunnies from Possum Lake's only adoption agency for rabbits, hair transplants. <laughs> okay, Red, you have a 30 seconds to get Dwight, yeah, cover your ears, to say this word. Busy. Busy. All right, all right. And go. Okay, Dwight, when you see someone working really hard, you say, boy, that guy sure is. An idiot. <laughs> okay, this is a person who does a whole lot of things. It's just go, go, go all the time. You can see that guy is. Not for my family. <laughs> all right, when, when a guy retires, everybody says the most important thing is to stay. Sober. <laughs> okay, think, think of an expression as something as a bee. I don't know any bees, Red. Oh, come on, Dwight, this is darn easy. What comes to your mind when you think of bees? Having to move. Uh, think, Dwight. They're called worker bees. There's gotta be a reason for that. Well, not necessarily. It could just be a job title that doesn't actually represent what they really do. Like service manager. <laughs> Okay, Dwight, you're at the marina. You suddenly realize you haven't done a darn thing all day. You think to yourself, boy, I better get... An assistant. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, I need one. This is our busy season. There we when it smells so bad, it curls your toes. 
and soon it gets into your hair and your clothes. Don't stand out front holding your nose. Get me out back, holding my hose. There we go. Man, I sure got my share of flat tires. Must have picked up a nail or something. <laughs> You know, the trouble with having a flat tire is the time you lose having to pull over to the side of the road and change them. Wouldn't it be great if you could change your tire without stopping or even slowing down? Because sometimes on the road you get a soft shoulder there and jacking up a vehicle can be very dangerous. So today I'm going to show you how you can make your very own mobile wheel changer. Okay, the first thing you need are a couple of ladders. They sell them now where they have the wheels on the one end for climbing walls or whatever. Well, you want to put wheels on the other end as well. I would suggest taking wheels off an old baby carriage because at my age, a fully functional baby carriage is just a cruel reminder of what once was, but is no more. Okay, you got your ladder, you got your wheels. Now you need to take a couple of these mini hydraulic jacks to attach the ladder safely and securely to the vehicle. Okay, as you can see, I got the ladder running all the way down the side there and I got the jack at this end and I've extended the ladder a fair ways out the back, where my emergency wheels are there. That'll keep me a fair distance from the disaster should that occur, which is certainly well within the realm of possibility. All right, let's give her a go. Okay, uh, here's a chance to demonstrate our mobile wheel changer. That was lucky. Step one. Set the cruise control. Okay, this is where you have to be a little bit creative. I got my jack handle here. Work my way down to the back. And instead of jacking the car up, I'm gonna jack the ladder down. is enough. It is in my family. And it's just that easy. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. idea I want to run by all you middle-aged guys out there. You know, when I was 19, the legal drinking age was 21. So me and my friends had to get fake ID from wherever, just so we could get into the bars. Now that didn't work real well for me. That's because my fake ID said I was a 27-year-old oriental woman. <laughs> now pretty soon, I got my 56th birthday coming up, and nothing special about it. I'm looking back over my life. I'd say I'm a pretty average 56-year-old. I mean, I, I, I look my age, and uh, I got about the same faculties as an average person. And I know a lot of 56-year-old guys, so I'm painfully aware of just how depressing those statements are. <laughs> so now my idea is, I'm thinking about using fake ID again. Now, you may look at me and not be that impressed that I'm 56, but what if I could prove to you that I was 73? <laughs> You'd think that was pretty special. <laughs> the energy, the not completely addled brain, the significant hair retention. Huh? I mean, I'd be the most amazing 73-year-old you ever saw, other than Tina Turner. And you know what? We all win with this idea. I feel good from the compliments, and you start looking forward to being a senior citizen. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. You know my personal self-help guru, Anthony Anthony? He says that uh, men don't communicate very well with each other, eh? No. 
It's true. We should do something about that. Well, he didn't mean us. Oh, sure he did, Red. Come on. We sit in this boat all day long, and we barely say two words to each other. Well, I'm thinking of those two words right now, Winston. Well, yeah. He's right, Mr. Green. I mean, this would be a perfect opportunity to have interpersonal communication. I'll tell you what. Why don't each of us think of something, you know, about ourselves? Something important. Something that we ordinarily wouldn't share with each other. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I've never been with a woman. Oh. <sighs> I hope you never go to prison. In my whole life, I've never been with a woman. And you know something? Nobody else knows that. Well, the women know it. Listen. Oh, I got one. Now, don't feel you have to top them, all right? <clears throat> uh, uh, once when I was in church, I emptied the collection plate into my pocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a poor choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about you, Mr. Green? What's your secret? Well, uh, this is a little embarrassing, but uh, actually, I have never changed the oil in the possum van. Come on. I think I'm going to be sick. I'm not going to change the filter once, you know. Oh. I'm appalled. Well, you started this. Oh, maybe so, but you went way over the line. I feel violated. Well, I got my new piece of drain pipe. I got it from, well, it doesn't matter where I got it. Got to hide it for a few days. So. <laughs> character for the audition. What do you think, huh? <laughs> Did pantyhose come in kryptonite? Brad, this is the way the gladiators looked, all right? We're not supposed to be pretty boys. Right. We're fierce warriors. All right. Ah! Hey, take it easy. Take it easy. Huh? That was pretty good. I was acting. <laughs> you're acting stupid. That's what you're doing. Listen, Ray. What? I am going to get that part. I'm going to live the life of a powerful man, because I've never done that. Well, I'm going to have Flinty McClintock's wife right by my side. <laughs> There's just one thing missing. Suicide note? No, I need an agent. I, I want you to be my agent, Red. Yeah, I, I, you know, all you have to do is stand there with your arms crossed saying no to everything. You know, Bernice might be a better choice. Red, I will give you 10% of my paycheck. Make it 15? See, you're good! You are good! And you are gonna make me a star! Die, Caesar, die! I have no idea. So Mike had asked us to meet him behind the lodge with an extension ladder. He was bringing a bicycle with a bad brake, apparently. And we couldn't quite figure out what he had in mind. He said he wanted us to help him build something. And then it was a sailboat. He wanted us to help him build a sailboat. Well, okay, that's fine, but we couldn't figure out the connection between the bike and the ladders. But with Mike, it's better not to ask questions. You end up in court as a character witness. So he said he had everything to build a sailboat around the corner. So we brought the, brought the stuff around. And uh, you know, the mystery really wasn't solved just by seeing what well, I just did was a, something under a tarp that did not look sailboat-like to me. But yeah, we don't get it. What is it? So he's, okay, off comes the tarp. No, that's a, that would be a van. I don't understand how that could possibly be. Oh, is the stuff's inside. All the stuff's in there. The door had rusted and I shut on. Give her a good, you build up your strength in prison, apparently, and you can really, if you have set your mind to it. He's a powerful guy, that like. Okay, now, I still wasn't sure how this could become a sailboat, but uh, Mike seemed pleased about it. And, now, putting the hat on is maybe not enough, Mike, but. Then he showed us the wheels attached to the steering wheel, and uh, Walter had the bicycle there to pull the sail in. And my job was to attach the extension ladder to the rear of the van, which is now the front of the boat, apparently. And then Mike says, just 
hoist the mizzen mast or whatever it is, and up she goes, and we got the tarp and the sail, and by golly, by the time uh, Walter wheeled her in, uh, hey, we were we were underway. Uh, kind of different. Uh, what Mike had that was unfortunate. What he could, hadn't realized was that there's a kind of a low bridge between the lodge and the town, and uh, lower than, say, the mast. And uh, so Walter and I bailed out, but Mike, he took the hit for the team, and then the problem now is that Mike really can't see where he's going, and uh, of course there is the quarry there. His version of the perfect storm, but I think Mike is finished with sailing. Another power boater in the making. This is the portion of the show we feature those three little words men find so hard to say. I don't know. Today's letter reads as follows. Dear experts, I have a rather unusual problem. I'm a happily married man, yet I have fallen in love with another woman. Oh, geez, read another letter. Get <laughs> <laughs> something on time travel or putting a barbecue together. No, 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 no. This is exactly the type of letter that we should be answering. It gives all of us a chance to show our sensitivity and compassion. <laughs> all right, all right. Go ahead, Winston. Harold will answer it. <laughs> okay. Whenever I see her, my heart beats faster, I get a lump in my throat, and I break out in a cold sweat. Okay, could be love. Could be malaria. My guess is, if it lasts, it's probably malaria. You said I can answer this one. All right, I'm sorry. Let me answer it. Let me answer it. Let me answer it. Right. Me answer it. Right. Go ahead, listen. I'm not a nut or anything. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whenever they say they're not a nut, they're not. He's not a nut! He's a person with a problem, and we are going to help him solve it. Read on, Winston. I'm in love with Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Should I tell my wife now, or wait until I'm king? Signed... <laughs> signed, on the throne. I'm gonna need a minute. Uh, well, I'm not. Don't tell your wife a thing until you become king. That way, if she gives you any grief at all, you can have her locked up in Scotland. That's not how you become king. I mean, for instance, who, who's the, what's the name of the husband of Queen Elizabeth right now? Prince Philip. Prince Philip. Exactly, not King Philip. See, marrying the queen doesn't automatically make you king. Geez, I never noticed that before. Yeah. See, I think this fellow's gonna have to rethink his whole plan. I don't think the answer is marrying Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, I agree. That'd be weird being married to the Queen. Having her face on all your money? <laughs> Instead of just having her hands on your money. Huh? <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding, Bernice. No, no, my, my advice to this person is, if, if you want to be married to a Queen, then you could practice by treating the wife you have like one now. <laughs> That is sound advice for any married man. You guys have no idea what you're talking about. If you come to sit down to dinner and there's a nine inch flame on your candle, you better get your septic pumped out or you'll have more on your plate than you can handle. Well, just came back from the auditions. I'll tell you, it's no fun being an agent. I just made a couple of very simple demands regarding rate of pay and dressing room beverages. Next thing you know, they kicked me out of the theater and told me never to come back, and that's the only plumbing store in the Tri-County area. <laughs> Dalton, that was not my fault. Okay, those morons don't know town. Tell you what, I'm gonna get you out of community theater into the big money. Advertising. How do you feel about wearing a chicken suit and handing out flyers? L listen, Red, listen to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. I got the part. Oh, I knew you would. Yeah. 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 There was just a small problem. Well, I'm a problem solver, Dalton. That's why you pay me the 25%. Well, I thought it was 20%. He's right. I am good. Yeah, well, Flinty McClintock's wife canceled. She's not going to play the Empress. She's out to do a one woman show at the Port Asbestos Seedless Fruit Festival. <laughs> And the producers pulled the old switcheroo on me. Hey, wait a minute. They can't do that. You won that part. You are Maximus. 
You want it Ferris and Squares, and they won't let them shaft us. <laughs> they didn't switch me. They switched the leading lady. What? Yes. <laughs> You are Rome, and I belong to Rome. Take me. Grin. We have to play a love scene. It's very tasteful. Well, we'll sure find out if you can act. Meeting time. Yeah, you guys go ahead. I'll be down in a minute, huh? Carry me. Oh! I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I had another life lesson today. I learned that it's better to die by the sword than to have a same-sex love scene with an ex-con. <laughs> now, the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. All right, uh, bow your heads for the men's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. All right, guys, Dalton has just informed me that he's bowing out of the place, so the role of Maximus is up for grabs. Who wants it? I get to pick. Ah. <laughs>